for Colombia, but looks like it's slightly used. And the door is probably closed, yes. Shark! Ah, Thunderbug. You there! Did the Legion send you? You're no legionary, but I don't think you're one of those bandits either. And you're certainly not one of my raw recruits. So, care to take on a commission from the captain of Fort Colovia? Bandits. Deserters from the war in Cyrodiil who united to pillage the countryside. They appeared in numbers too great for my small cohort of raw recruits to deal with. I could use someone competent and experienced to help me out. I wonder what's small cohort. Is that like a normal sized cohort? It happens so fast. The Legion has no idea we're in trouble. I need someone to accompany Legionary Calvo inside. Reach the bell tower and ring the warning signal. If you're willing to take the job, Calvo can show you where to find what you need. I won't let you down, Captain. This way, friend. I don't think he'll survive. So... Please, keep an eye on Calvo. He's scared out of his wits, but he's determined to go back in there anyway. Oh, I suppose that's what it means to be a legionary, but I don't think I could do it. So, apparently Cohort is... Um, seven, six, seven guys. Okay, eight, eight guys. Well, that's a Bears. squad. They can be sly and sneaky, so be on your guard. Let's, let's take left. We can go here. Ah, can't, can't scale that up. So yeah, no go. Bandits. More or less. I marked the approximate locations on your map, but it happened so fast. As aide de camp, those items were my responsibility. Like I said, we don't use it very often. And the bears have to live somewhere, right? Well, yes, but we only arrived here to begin our training a few days. In part. I don't think those guys will be taking the... No, Florentina. Why did they have to kill her? Okay, nine, nine persons. <laughs> Cohort. So I don't think these guys will be taking Cyrodiil back at any time. But historically, they will. The Imperium will rise back even before the Tiber Septim. I wonder if the real reason for uh, al alliance leaders to ne negotiate for, uh, for the peace is that their armies are refusing to fight. I mean, that would be like a lo logical reason. The 
captain sent us for. Let's keep going. Ouch. Yeah. These deserters turned bandits have no honor. They killed legionaries for no good reason. Let's see what you're made of. Yeah. Eleven, twelve. Uh, is that a legionnaire? Okay, that's that's a lot of bones. Way way too many. Can't actually contain interesting. The fifteenth body. Of course, all of them might not be the. That's not the legionnaire. So let's say it's uh, about this. I was in this hall when the fort was attacked. I hid the communique in an ash pile in the fireplace before I joined the retreat. No one deserves such a fate. Okay, so this. Okay, so they look like that. So that's not fail. Uh, eleventh Delta, I think. Feeble-minded. <laughs> yeah. Feeble-minded Count Galantinus. Unsurpassed detain, <laughs> detain met. <laughs> Remember, we need to find the communique with the proper chime seat. On my way out, I tossed the bell tower key in a stack of hay. Now that we have the sequence, the key, and the payroll, we need to reach the bell tower. It's on the west side of the fort. Dark company. 
fight to their last breath! Hero of Auntus. A deserter and a bandit. Hey, hey, why are you throwing away perfectly good coin? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have the payroll, the ch it's all in the communique we recovered. Just ring the bell in the prescribed fashion, and that will alert the rest of the Legion that there's a problem at Fort Colovia. Okay, now we dealt with their leader. Okay, how do we... Okay, that's the door. Defeat Cri Chieftain Grimstall. Okay. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I, I think I have played before similar we quest. We actually made it! Up here, friend! Just ring the bell in the proper sequence, and the alert will be sounded. I never thought I'd be so happy to hear the ringing of a bell. You take the payroll and report back to the captain. I'll continue to ring the bell until help arrives. The communique says we need to keep ringing the proper sequence at set intervals until we receive a response or help arrives. That responsibility falls to me now. Okay, so I'm getting 220 ping in Esolon. Should I keep playing the game or refund? Will it be enjoyable to play at 200 ping? I, I think it is. This hasn't. I can't fight like you, but this. This I can let's, do. Let's, ma let's show. Then see. Ah, yes, okay. So it's, it's here, down here. I'm, I'm so blind. So, thing is that if you are getting like a way high ping, that's probably uh, something to do with your setup. Or your your signal is routed through the too many, too many, too many um, sites. So, uh, trace route, trace R RT, uh, command in in command uh, prompt or something else might might be uh, give give you a chance to evaluate your where your signal goes. But ESO has never been like a pretty big on the ping. I'm I'm constantly playing a, a 100, and this is normal. This is always pretty normal. So I think it should be enjoyable to play play with the with the 200. But if you go in a city and do PM. PvP, that might be uh, too much. I, I will get to a ping because there's no Asian savers. This gaming is only Europe, so so yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, you are not. If you are PVE, playing PVE, and not PvP, then it's not a, not a is issue because clients over in, in to today they are drawing drawing th like they think th think happens some small 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 warping can ha happen and if you have been lo watching uh, diligently you have noticed that sometimes things happen like uh, f few frames get skipped because 
server and say, okay, it's, it died al already. Yeah, wanna pay PvE only. I don't think it's a it's a big big problem with, with this. How long before reinforcements arrive? Do you think? I knew Calvo could do it. Someone's ringing the bell. From the sound of the bell, I assume your mission was successful, soldier. Were you able to recover the cohort's payroll as well? And where's Legionary Calvo? He did, did he? <laughs> okay. I knew the lad was brave and had something to prove, but this is beyond the call of duty for a raw recruit. If he survives until the reinforcements get here, <laughs> I may just have to promote him. But why well, do you think he did it? Mostly useless. So, okay, this is pretty normal for the uh, Elder Scrolls Online. You can uh, think and you can actually decide how the story ends in some situations, but the narrative is not branching in a sense that this is good, good this is a good railroad <laughs> good, good railroad demanded to stay behind, yes, that's, that's his true his duty? he's practically a hero we'll make a legionary out of him yet if he survives ringing the warning bell I have a feeling he'll be one of the best of us someday. That's an excellent question. It depends on which cohorts are nearby and what else they may be dealing with. Yeah, I hear I'll we've be been keep having playing trouble the with game. Wood yeah, sure, you, you, Daedra you recently, do what you do. You know? Here's you, the payment I you promised. You do what, what's, what's courtesy of the Legion. What's not nice for you, and and how if if, if it doesn't feel nice, well, sure, but there's like. Um, yeah. So we got the Legion Cleaver. That's a Magapir Vintage set. So this is pretty nice new set we have here. Which causes the bleed damage. But it's more like damage dealing set. So I might use this as a combination to tank set or DPS set. Might might be a pretty nice. But 5 hitters is a, bit a, is a lot. Uh, if you kill a monster, they burst with the blood magic. As bleed damage, not all monsters bleed, so that's kind of easy. No sign of reinforcement. Have you purchased yet? the new new DLC? Yeah, I, I, I purchased. Can hold out purchased a bit purchased this. Uh, re, re pre ordered, basically. Got some nice. The legionary from Antus who abandoned his post. <laughs> it was rumored that he had deserted the legion. But we weren't completely sure. Yeah. This now we know. I hope this is a burden off Calvo's shoulders, provided he survives. So this is the Calvo new. Was ringing the bell? New Calvo DLC. The we are here in Westveld. In this situation. Okay. Fenorian, what are you doing here? Fancy meeting you here, friend. I hope you're not here for the auction at the Valente Vineyards. I'm certain the event bodes ill, but I'm reluctant to enter that nest of vipers alone. Would you be willing to join me? For ample compensation, of course. It isn't just any auction. It's run by and for vampires. Being a vampire myself, I can't help but wonder why Lord Gallio Valente, vineyard owner and vampire coven leader, wants to sell wine to other vampires. It's not like we partake of the stuff. Not exactly. I was hunting a violent vampire gang called the Terrors when I found an invitation to the auction. Inviting vampires to such an event is strange enough, but offering this Vesper Valente vintage? That has me concerned. Will you help? First, let's look around the vineyard. I want to examine the grapes they grow here. Besides, it's a good idea to get a feel for the grounds before we head into the auction. Never fear. This is exactly what House Ravenwatch trained me for. It's been in the Valente family for generations. From what I was able to ascertain, Lord Valente inherited the place about a year ago. Seems he returned from a long trip and his father suddenly fell ill and died. Now the place is under his control. Pretty sus. <laughs> According to the invitation I found, yes. And not just any vampire. He's the leader of a powerful coven, which is why this whole affair concerns me. Ravenwatch has never heard of this coven or Valente before. And a wine auction? It makes no sense. Oh, the usual. 
Advancing my studies, investigating for House Ravenwatch. I must say, I do like Westweald's climate. Much less damp and chilly than what we have over in Rivenspire. I will tell Adusa and Gwendis I ran into you, though. We're one of the noble houses of Rivenspire that just happens to be a coven of vampires. But we're good vampires. Yeah, he's a good we vampire. We only drink from willing donors and never to excess. Our mission is to hunt and put down the more ravenous examples of our kind. As I said, I was trying to pick up the trail of the terrors. Violent vampires that were last seen heading toward the Weald when I found the invitation. Another troublesome vampire I was forced to deal with had it among his possessions. You mean besides the fact that it was addressed to a dangerous vampire and supposedly invited them to an auction they have absolutely no reason to be interested in? When things appear to make no sense, I feel obliged to find clarity. Death Hound. Field hand of Trobeter. An injured field hand. Let's find out what happened. This is no place to wander aimlessly, traveler. The foul beasts are vicious and hungry for blood. Ugliest hounds Trovir has ever seen. This one just finished checking the new grapes and was on his way to the auction when it came out of nowhere. Ripped up Trovir's leg real good. Trovir thought the request was strange too, but Lord Valente insisted, and Lady Valente specifically told Sentry Helvius to let the servants in, even if we didn't have the fancy invitations. If you're here for the auction, you should head inside. He came back from his travels different. Even his father was concerned about the changes in his beloved son. But shortly after young Gallio returned, his father fell ill and died. Gallio inherited the vineyard, the title, and all that entailed. Just that he invited some important guests. He's been working on the new grapes for a special vintage since he returned, and he's very proud of it. Says it's going to make him even more rich and powerful. Can that be possible? This one is unsure. Mm -hmm. Lord Valente developed the new seeds in his alchemical laboratory under the manor. They grow thorny vines that bear a crimson grape unlike anything Drovir has ever seen before. Once the first vintage was ready, Lord Valente set up this auction. That sounds like Lord a plan Valente's from Oblivion or wife, something. A high elf with a name too complicated for this one's Kajiti tongue. Well. Drovir believes they met during young Gallio's time away. But what does this old field hand know of such things? Unusual. Well, this one does not like to talk out of turn, but... Drovir hears that Lady Valente wants to be more involved in running the vineyard. But Lord Valente refuses to include her. This one wonders why he even married her. Investigate the crowds. It appears the grapes did not agree with this death hound. Interesting. So it's, it's, it's a rabbit. Let's look more closely at those grapes. The scent wafting off those grapes. It's tantalizing. Just as Count Ferrandis taught me, there is always something to learn if you simply pay attention. The field hand was attacked by a death hound. 
a sure indication of vampiric activity. And he provided a wealth of information. Don't you agree? So you were listening. Good. The field hand described Gallio as different when he returned. He developed a new grape to make him richer and more powerful, and he recently married a high elf. But the marriage already seems troubled. Well, that's that's not a new thing. <laughs> if you marry high elf, that marriage is trouble, troubling. The grapes were developed using alchemy. They've been infused with blood, and I find the aroma tantalizing. But I dare not try one. Look what consuming the grapes did to the Death Hound. Our next step is to attend the auction. You shall be my guest. The Field Hand assumed you were a guest of the auction, and the invitation did say to bring my most favored mortal servant. If anyone most asks, favored. you're the blood servant of Master Bogvir, the vampire I shall pretend to be and whose invitation I carry. The invitation indicates we're to head to the walled garden just east of the manor. I suppose that's where they're letting the guests gather prior to the start of the auction. Shall we proceed? Let's see. It promises an evening in the beautiful Colovian countryside, majestic views, new and innovative cultivation, a new vintage called Vesper Valente, the auction. Ah, yes. And this. Who says wine doesn't belong in a flask? I could be reading into things, but in some vampire circles, flask is used as a crude term to refer to a blood servant. Someone who willingly lets vampires feed on them, usually for compensation. So what if somebody drinks a wine, a lot, being a drunk, and then vampire feeds from the drunken servant? Does the camp vampire go to the drunken state at, as well? <laughs> Indeed. Though the vampire I acquired this invitation from wasn't the sort to rely on blood servants. He was extremely cruel. Preferred the thrill of the hunt and drank to kill. Ah, this event becomes stranger the more I try to make sense of it. Halt! Your invitation, please. Right. Here you are. Welcome, Master Bogvir, and guest. I'll escort you to Lord Valente, this way. Totally unnecessary. I'll find him. Thanks. Just a moment. Let's talk first. So... Do I look like a Master Bogvir? Ah, probably not. But we work with the tools we're given. Let's split up and mingle. Talk to servants, guests, whoever's willing to chat. Anything that can tell us the true purpose of this auction. Vampires don't need wine. Especially made from grapes that apparently poisoned a Deathhound. Try not to come off as too curious, though. We're supposed to be guests here, after all. I am. But as soon as we walked in, I was hit with sudden pangs of hunger. Not unlike when I smelled those grapes, but much stronger. Luckily, I carry a flask of blood for times of need. I'll just find an out-of-the-way spot to take a sip. Can I offer you a glass of our new Vesper Valente? Certainly. I'm very curious about this wine. Really? You're the first of Lord Valente's guests to accept the wine. I hope you enjoy it. I'd offer you a glass, but your friend just took the last one. I wasn't expecting that. None of the other guests I've served this evening even tried it. Only their attendants and servants. It is. The vineyard's latest vintage, Vesper Valente. Lord Valente did tell us that his guests probably wouldn't want to try it before the auction, but that I should freely provide it to their attendants and servants. I have. Lord Valente was generous enough to let all the vineyard workers and servants have a glass before the guests arrived. It was salty and crisp, with a slight metallic aftertaste. Something to do with Lord Valente's alchemical process, I think. So it's, it's full of... blood? Oh, 
Okay, actually, actually cooking the fish here. You there! I am bored, and my hounds are hungry. Will the auction start soon, or must we continue this Kalovian dance of manners and pleasantries while my gold sits unspent? Ah, apologies. I mistook you for a Valente servant. Lord Valente is clever, and if the wine accomplishes a fraction of what he claims, the waiting will have been worth it. But I would prefer to simply buy what I want and not deal with an auction. Haven't you tried it yet? You really must sample the vintage for yourself. I suggest you find a glass quickly, before the auction begins. All of the servants and attendants must have that wine flowing through their veins for the main event. I heard Lord Valente and his new bride loathe each other. Why would he marry a mortal? It's beneath him. Hmm. Is this Vesper Valente really as special as it sounds? Oh, Lord Valente is certainly proud of his new creation. Hmm. Wouldn't that be something? Ah, welcome. I'm Lord Gallio Valente, the humble proprietor of Valente Vineyards and Winery. You, however, have me at a disadvantage. I do not believe we've met. Which of my acquaintances decided to bring you along as their guest today? Bogvir, of course. Where is my old friend? Still upset about that little incident? No matter. I was hoping to clear things up before the auction got underway. Send him over to talk to me the next time you see him. Oh, don't trouble yourself. Any guest of Bogvir's is welcome. Enjoy yourself, and do make sure to try the wine. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must prepare for the Interesting. auction. Another one of my husband's guests. No. You're either an attendant or a servant, I'd wager. Who brought you to my husband's little affair? Pray tell. Master Bogvir. Is that the name he uses now? You know, he bears a striking resemblance to an old acquaintance of mine. In fact, I'm sure of it. How is Venorian? And why has he come to Valente Vineyard? No. And why don't I believe you? No, don't worry. I have no desire to reveal Fenorian's deception to my husband. Not before I learn what's going on here the same as you. Be so kind as to let Fenorian know I'd like to speak to him when he's... Okay, interesting. Plot is beginning. This wine is specifically meant for the mortals here, not the vampires. So why are the vampires bidding on it? And why is my flask doing little to curb my rising hunger? Tell me you learned something more, my friend. I'm sorry? Did you say Lady Valente's name is Ursilia? Oh, she's that, Ursilia. Should we leave? Maybe we can sneak out the way we came in. Right, right. We do need to figure out what's going on here. All right, I'll stay and talk to Ursilia. You head into the manor and see if you can find Lord Valente's office. Something in there might tell us more about the purpose of this wine. How does Ursilia know you? That's a story for another time, friend. But stay focused. You see what you can find in the manor while I talk to Lady Valente. Don't worry. We can talk more later. In the meantime, go and search Lord Valente's office. He must have one inside the manor. Ledgers, journals, letters, alchemical notebooks. Anything that gives us some idea of Lord Gallio Valente's plans for the wine. Vampires can't drink it, but they're the ones invited to bid on it. We need to know why. Oh, 
Binary key. Journal. Why did I ever agree to marry that woman? My first fiction of vampire were challenging. I decided to take control of my destiny. While the vampire can't consume the elixir made of from the mushrooms grown in a vampire blood directly, it's so well long enough to reap the benefits. If the elixir funneled to the intermediary, we receive power without any of the poisonous effects. Enriched with the mushrooms, the vampire can then consume by non vampire. It allows us to feed of non vampire. Fortified with the wine and therefore receive benefits of elixir. Interesting. Double or triple or innate vampiric powers. Yeah, because if, if the vampires just feast on blood, they turn into... Well, they, they look more like monsters and more like Molag Paul. So... I'll tell their fighter skill or raven what, what you are up to. You again? What are you doing in my husband's office? You and Fenorian. Never in the right place at the right time. So, did you find what you were looking for? Share it with me and maybe I won't call down to the winery for my husband's army of mercenaries. Let me see that journal. By the stars. He killed his own father. And he plans to kill me. Oh, he's a cretin and a monster. And you didn't see and anything. Yes, pouring wine into people just so you can eat them and gain unnatural power is pretty bad too. Damn it! I drank the wine! I suspected something was amiss. Since I arrived, we haven't consummated our marriage, and he spends his time down in the winery, locked in his alchemy laboratory with his mercenaries. Plus, he covets my family's fortune. But a vampire... makes sense. This vineyard could be a mother load in the right hands. My hands. Friend of Fenorian. Not my husband's. I assume you're here to stop him? Help Fenorian finish the task and I'll forgive him for the affront he visited upon me and my family. Make sure you do. I have no intent to serve as a wine glass for my husband. Ercelia! I suppose I owe you an explanation. Oops. Of course you do, but I don't care. Just talk to your friend and deal with my husband. All right. Lord Valente is well and truly into the auction now, so we have a bit of time. I never expected to find Ercelia here with you, though. What did you discover? And what did she mean by deal with her husband? Interesting. He really spells it out, doesn't he? Alchemically enhanced mushrooms used as fertilizer for alchemically treated grape seeds. And the hunger. I wasn't losing control, it's an effect of the grapes. Well, that's a relief. That does seem to be the general idea. If we allow this to spread, the ramifications will be staggering. Even relatively peaceful vampires might be tempted to start killing out of hand. We need to stop this. Um, oh, yes. I do suppose I owe her for that. I'm no hired assassin, but I do make a habit out of disposing of dangerous vampires. We will do what is necessary to end this threat. Nothing more, nothing less. And that begins with destroying the wine. Head downstairs and scout the area. I'll follow along shortly. I need to try to make things right with Ercelia. 
And maybe I have something in my alchemy kit to deal with the wine in her system. Just the smell of it makes me... hungry. We were betrothed. Ah! A marriage so, arranged by our families. Former girlfriend. There might have been some affection there. But it was mostly a business agreement. When I became a vampire, I just left. I thought it would be a mercy. She hasn't hasn't got um, much of luck with uh, with the um, vampires. As much as I trust you and value your company, my friend, that's not a story I feel like sharing. Especially not here and now. Maybe someday. But no, I didn't want to hurt anyone I knew, Ursilia, my family. So I simply left. Eventually, Count Verandas found me and made me part of House Ravenwatch. Rivenspire is a long way from Somerset, and Westfield is farther still. I never expected this. I'm not going to go out of my way to kill Gallio, if that's what you're asking. We do need to destroy his operation, though. This elixir turned wine is too dangerous to distribute to aggressive vampire clans. What happens after that is up to him. Ursilia! Before we talk, let me see if I've got anything that will flush the wine from your system. I'm not drunk, Fenorian. I only had a glass or two. <laughs> okay. Search the winery. Funny, funny lag there. Captive. And apparently under the influence of the wine. Friend, let's speak. These workers must be some of the subjects Gallio mentioned in his journal. They're on the verge of turning into blood fiends. I might be able to mix a counteragent with the proper ingredients. Grape pulp left over from the Vesper Valente wine, wax flower petals to hasten the recovery process, and imperial oak tannins to make the remedy effective topically. Find those items around the winery while I make preparations. Okay. Apparently he's pretty good at that alchemy. Okay, now we have everything we need. Good. I was starting to worry. I'm glad you're back. Did you find everything we need? Once I've brewed the counter-agent, 
pick up the bucket and splash the remedy over our poor patients. <laughs> okay, that's it. so easy. It's not the most dignified way to administer medicine, but it works without putting either of you at risk. Okay, bucket time. And that should do it. You're free to administer the cure. The bucket. Are already subsiding. You saved us. Please, you need to stop him. Thank you for helping us. Please tell me you're also here to stop Lord Valente. We really thought things were looking up. Lord Valente had such grand ideas for the vineyard and winery. He even asked us to try a new vintage he was working on. We felt so honored. Then we started to get sick and he locked us down here. Yes, it's right through those doors to the west. He's growing weird mushrooms and has all kinds of alchemical equipment. Destroy his equipment and burn the mushrooms. That should put an end to his vile experiments. We need to destroy that laboratory. You scout ahead while I work on freeing these people. I'll meet you there. Okay. I knew there was something wrong about you. You won't ruin all my hard work! Oh no. Open to me! Let's destroy those blood fiends for the shopper's knives. of growing pots. This is it. The laboratory. We need to destroy it all. Let me explain. Valente's alchemical equipment is truly impressive. It's a shame we have to destroy it. But we need to make sure no one else can continue his experiments. These vats turn the mushrooms into a fertilizer for the grapes. Increase the flames under the vats by adjusting the valves. That will increase the pressure. After that, set fire to the mushroom planters. Then get clear before the vats explode. A part of me hates to see valuable equipment go to waste. But we can't allow more of the Vespa Valente to be created. Now come on, let's do this. Turn up the flame valves as high as they'll go. I'll get rid of these research notes. Mushrooms. The 
few well-placed torches should ignite the entire harvest. Sure, once again. Ocelia, about your husband. Not now, Fenorian. I have more important matters. <laughs> As I was saying. I'll compensate double wages for all who remain. With your expertise, we'll revive the traditional methods and be producing excellent wine in no time. I assume that explosion that rocked the vineyard was your doing? You and Fenorian, I suppose? I'll take it that you accomplished what I asked. Never mind. Speak to Fenorian. I have a business to set right. No? Don't say another word. If the Legion comes to investigate, the less I know, the better. I'll hire extra protection for the grounds, though. Sentry Alvius could use the help. At least until we clear out the rest of those vampires. Why not? I don't need a husband for that. And I have twice the mind for business than Gallio ever did. Hmm. <laughs> if you find yourself in possession of a large fortune in the future, come see me. Perhaps I'll be ready to give marriage another go by then. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, was thinking, uh, vampirism was used as a, as a cure in a couple couple quests in previous uh, expansions, and now we have there's a, there's a guy who wants to sell wine with the vampirism. Ah, <laughs> my mind is blown. That was excellent work, friend. We destroyed Lord Gallio's laboratory and managed to rescue the workers he experimented on. There might be some ramifications over remaining Vesper Valente, but it won't become the sweeping problem I feared. We didn't have to. Ursilia told me she interrupted the auction and told Lord Gallio in a voice loud enough for <laughs> all to hear that the Ravenwatch was on the premises. One mention of House Ravenwatch and the invited vampires fled the estate. <laughs> Good reputation. Perhaps a few bottles were carried off, but none of them had time to load any casks or crates before they fled. I'll track them down eventually. And before I take my leave, I'll make sure the remaining vintage is destroyed. Arcelia is set on taking control and turning the vineyard and winery into a profitable enterprise. I have no doubt she'll succeed. And speaking of succeeding, your help was invaluable in stopping Lord Gallio. Please. Take this with my thanks. Okay, so this is some special drink. Okay, interesting. I suppose you're off on another adventure now, friend. Know that I appreciate the assistance you provided. And the companionship. If you ever have need of House Ravenwatch, just send the word. We always have time for our friends. Eventually. After I make sure any remnants of Lord Gallio's vile experiments are taken care of here, then I may check on the auction guests that scattered and see that any absconded bottles of Vesper Valente are dealt with. There's always something. There's always something. 